Hello, Officer Tony here. This week, Ricky's gonna put the frats in the neck and he's going to do an excellent job. Yeah, and uh, nobody paid me to say that either. No, that's my honest opinion. Hey, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Disclaimer, this is not the only way to put in frets. It's just the way that I do it. Fretting takes a while to learn. You should always practice on a junk neck first. If you're interested in the tools I use, there's a link in the comments section to a web page on my website. On that page, I've got Amazon affiliated links. That's where when you use the link, I make a little bit of money, help support the channel and the website. Use strategies in this video at your own risk. Also, I like dogs. So steps for installing frets. Step one, clean the slots of wood dust. Sanding, what ended up happening is a lot of this wood dust gets pushed down inside of the slot here and that's no good when you want to put the fret in. So you have to kind of clean that stuff out. This is a little saw that I got at Hobby Lobby, which is also where I got this. You can order this stuff online or not, but it's kind of handy for what I'll do is I'll just kind of use the, use the corner of it and just kind of go through and, and I, I don't want to cut anything here. I'm just using this to clear out the, the dust, just kind of clear the slot out. So I did this guy here, right? And no problem, got all the, the stuff out. But this guy here, I'm going to lean down so you can hear in my lapel mic what I'm hearing. Okay, you ready? Hear that? Here and here, there's a screw. I'm positive of it. So maybe not quite the high quality neck I thought this neck was. So what does that mean? What it means is that when I go to fret this fret right here, this particular fret, I'm going to have to uh, notch out so that it'll fit on top of that. So the grade for this neck just went down a little bit in, in my estimation. I've never run into that before. There shouldn't be any screws. There shouldn't be anything metal that I'm running into. The truss rod itself is underneath this. The truss rod is, is here. So I, d I don't really know what that would be but it's an inexpensive kit, so I guess I have to remember that. Okay, see how I'm getting it out? So again, I'm just clearing the wood dust out. I'm not cutting these slots any deeper. That's not necessary, hopefully. The wood dust out. I was calling it sawdust. Well, in this case, I guess it would be sawdust, but sawdust comes from cutting from a saw. So wood dust is probably closer to the mark. So how deep are these slots? That is an interesting question because the frets I have are a certain depth, and if these slots aren't deep enough for those frets, I'm going to have to go in and cut them deeper with, with this guy here. And I've got my white paper under here so that I can salvage some of this stuff. Always good to have. The reality is I'm gonna end up doing this more than once. Oh, look, here's another one. Listen, hear that? But ironically down here, it's just in one spot. Up there it was in two spots, down here it's in one. Yeah, that is definitely metal. Right, well, again, not very impressive. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do here, let me show you. All right, I'm drawing uh, upside down, but here's the neck, right? Here's the fret slot. So the concept is your fret is kind of shaped like this, right? But then, and then here's the part with the, the little notches on it, the little barbs that are designed to stick in the wood. But the issue is, it doesn't go flat here, it goes kind of like this. And so this wood here needs to match this same shape. So what I'm going to be doing is taking off a little on the sides here. And in order to do that, I'm going to go to our old old-fashioned file kit, step two. Cut a slight bevel into the tops of the slots. 
this guy here is three-sided. It's just about perfect. So, you would not want to run with this. Mm, get the point. All right. So, let's start up high here. And again, I cleaned those all out mostly because I wanted to be able to see them. I'm going to end up cleaning them out again because this is going to create some more dust. It's only a little though. I don't feel like I need to go outside to do this. I'm just kind of, I want to make a bit of like a, a V, kind of like that. I'm going to work carefully here. I don't want this to slip. And then I'm going to see if you can see here and have a look at it. Now, to put the frets in, I'm going to have to go through and do this on all the slots. Then I'm going to have to clean the slots out again, right? And uh, then I'll actually go through and measure the, the, uh, the fret wire and I'll cut it and I'll do it all very precise. But for just right this second, I just want to know if this is enough of a bevel that I'm giving it. So I'm just going to take one of these guys out and just kind of push it a little bit and have a look at it. I don't even have the hammer in here. You wouldn't want to hammer it in now, but I just want to see if it looks about right. Because one problem you can have is if you cut this slot too big, then this thing just sits in there. And I mean, you can super glue it, but to me, it's better to have a, a tight fit. So I cannot really, I think that's about right. I think I might've gone a teeny bit too deep on that. So I think what I just learned is I'm gonna use this guy here. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the camera. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna widen all these slots. And yeah. Step three, remove the fret tangs from one end of each fret. Okay, so now I'm getting to the point of the video where I'm doing the overdubs, the vocal narration, if you will, because I've got a lot of sped up footage coming up. Step four, check the depth of each slot. So this is a fret depth gauge from Stu Mac. And you can see it's got four sides. Each side is a different radius. You're going to check how deep the slots are. And as you can see here, this is a good depth because it's got two lines. And you can measure your frets to see which line is appropriate. And I used this to check every slot. You can also use it to push out wood dust if you want to. So I went through every slot and did this. You get the idea. Step five, cut each fret to the correct length and store. Now I'm going to cut each fret to the correct length and I'm gonna put them in this numbered foam block. And the reason for this is every fret from the start of the neck, the first fret all the way up to the highest fret, they're gonna be slightly different widths as the neck itself gets slightly wider as you go. So I'm cutting each one to pretty much flush to the wood. And that's going to save me a lot of filing and or sanding uh, in the end. You just want to be careful when you're doing this that you're not cutting too far in. So you have to take your time, which believe it or not, I did take my time on this. I'm just speeding up the video because no one would want to watch a hour long video of my painstaking work. Okay, I'm almost done with the frets. See that piece of tape? That's what I started using to guide where I was instead of counting the slots each time. That's a good time saver. Step six, remove tangs from the other end of each fret. So now I'm gonna remove the tangs from the other end. And the advantage to doing this is that, again, there's less filing, but also the fret tang part of the fret, you don't need that sticking out of the end. Uh, most companies do this, Fender does this, obviously. And the frets that came with this guitar, the cheap frets, already had that done. 
So step seven is to hammer each fret into place. Now the professionals use an arbor press for this, but this is how we used to do it in the olden days of yore. You use a hammer and just kind of gently tap it in. I'm not whacking this thing. I'm not Thor trying to put down the Hulk, right? I'm doing it gently. It's hard to tell because this is sped up. And I am using a, a rubber hammer here. Uh, there are people who actually use a regular hammer and they're just real gentle with it. I don't have that kind of finesse. So here I am. Oh, remember this guy? This was the problem child fret. So I cut a little bit of the fret tangs out where the screws are underneath the wood. So I'm spending some time on this one. And then on the last fret, because I wanted you to be able to see this, let's get to it. Okay, so here's the last fret. The first thing you do is you put in the ends to get the fret seated, and then you go through with a hammer. But I'm going to stop it after I've got the two ends in so that you can kind of see what this looks like. So there's one end, there's the other. Okay, it's over here. There you go. Stop. Now check this out. That's the gap under the middle of the fret. It's really important that you hammer frets in all the way, otherwise the fret's going to be too high. Right? So you saw me, I just tapped in the edges. Now I'm going to tap in the rest of it. You can tell I don't hammer all the time. <laughs> there you go. That is much, much better. Okay, cool. We're done with this step. Step eight. We're going to file the fret ends level to the edge of the fretboard. And then we're going to bevel them. So we're going to put like an angle on them. So I've cut all the frets super close to the edge of the fretboard, but some of them are, are still sticking out a little bit. And all of them are sharp. So I've got a special file for this. And one side is 90 degrees and the other side is 45 degrees. So the first thing you want to do is use the 90 degree and get the frets perfectly level with the wood. So if any of them are sticking out, we want to generally take care of that. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to use the other side of the file and I'm going to put a little bit of an angle on the frets, which you can kind of see there. Uh, it came and went pretty quick. But yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And then uh, once that is done, there we go. Groovy. So now what I'm going to do is step nine, I'm going to knock off sharp fret and edges for safety. So I'm not doing like a, a final uh, treatment of the fret ends right now. I'm not finishing them. All I want to do right now is I just want to go in and they're a little sharp and I just want to knock that off. Just because I'm going to be working with the neck and I don't want to cut my fingers. So some people don't do this because essentially I'm going to end up doing these fret ends twice. But I like to do it because I don't like sharp fret ends. So I'm going to go through on each side as you can see and I'm just knocking off the the sharpness. Again, this is not the final fret end treatment. Once that's accomplished, I noticed that there are one or two spots where I didn't get close enough with that file. So I'm using a big three corner file here and I'm just treating a couple of those areas just to make sure. This is like the, the difference between a mediocre fret job and a good one. Okay, step 10, tape off the board, and then we're going to mark the fret end, the frets, and we're going to level them. So I'm using painter's tape here, and this is important because painter's tape is not going to take up any wood, right? You don't want to use regular tape for this, although I guess some people do. But painter's tape is great because it won't rip up part of the fretboard. On a brand new neck like this, that might not matter, but this is how I always do them. So I got black permanent marker here, Sharpie. 
You can use any color you want. But the point is, I'm going to use a special Stumac file, which is perfectly flat. It's a leveling beam, right? And I have got, I believe, 320 grit sandpaper on there. And the goal here is to level the frets. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to step 11 is mark the frets and crown them. So the top of each fret should not look like it shouldn't be flat and it shouldn't be like a triangle. It should be more like the shape of the top of a school bus. So what I do is mark them. Then I use a combination of a crowning file, which is shaped like the top of a school bus. And sometimes I use a regular uh, three corner file if I feel like the crowning file isn't giving me the results I want. And it looks here you can see I've switched to the three corner file. And I'm just kind of going back and forth just to see with these frets what's going to give me the best results. What I'm looking for here is to thin that black line. I don't want to touch the black line in the center of the frets because that would mean that I'm taking off material and I don't want to do that. I don't want to take material off the top. With that done, I kind of want to round off the fredges, the, the tops of the frets. And so I'm using a folded up rag and some sandpaper. So now step 12 is to go in and remove the scratches and then polish. Because the frets are where I want them, but all that filing left some scratches. And once we get the scratches out of the way, then the next thing is that we want to polish them. So you can see I've got a lot of different options here. I've got sanding sticks. I'm soaking in water, sandpaper and water, fret erasers, polishing cloths, a lot of options. And when all is said and done, I've decided I'm going to go, I'm going to start out with the wet sandpaper and then move on to the fret erasers. This is 220 grit sandpaper that's wet. And I like this best to get rid of those file marks. So I'm going to go through all the frets and do that. Then I'm going to use the fret erasers. So these guys have grits from 200 up to 1200. I'm going to go over each fret with each grit. Once done, I'm going to use the polishing cloths, which are higher grit than the fret erasers. So we're removing the scratches and then we're just, we're polishing these guys. We don't want the strings to be catching on anything when we're, when we're bending. We want these to be as smooth as possible, but also level and crowned. There's what 220 grit looks like. This is the top of a fret. 400 grit, right? 800 grit. And 1200 grit. So you can see the difference. There's 2000 grit. You just want it as smooth as possible. So here we go. Looks like I'm on the 800 grit eraser at this point in time. Hmm. If I could work this quick in real life, I could probably do this professionally. Looks like Barry Allen. What would my speedster name be? Old Man Flash? Gramps Flash? Oh, uh, we're moving on to polishing cloths now. And honestly, Mostly what I'm doing now is just making the frets shinier. I can do more than one fret at a time with these guys due to their shape, which is pretty cool. I am almost done. Cool. So then step 13 is to remove the tape and clean the neck and the board. So I think I, I recorded removing the tape. I don't think I showed uh, cleaning the neck, but you clean it with naphtha. And that gets off pretty much everything. The, the tape residue, your, your, you know, where your fingers have been touching the wood, gets off everything. Anyway, here I am removing the tape. There's better ways, faster ways to do it, but this is how I do it. So there you go. I am pretty much done. Except for one more thing. The final fret and filing. Then I'm done. So here I'm going to go through and I got my 
my visor on so I can see really close. I just want to, I want to basically round off any sharp edges on every single fret. So this is something that really, really takes a lot of time and practice. You know, I'll be honest with my shaky hands, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but you know, I do it anyway. So that's the end of the video. The frets are in and in the next build video, we're going to work on staining the body and the neck.